to be the very first presenter of the webinar series and my understanding is from Gan that um, Simati plans to have um, more of these webinar series in the future. So for all of you listening, I encourage you just to follow up from uh, Simati and uh, stay tuned for, for further webinars. So um, my name is Johan Forsman. I have had the privilege of joining Animal Doctors International um, as of last year. So Animal Doctors International is a hospital or actually a set of uh, hospitals here in Southeast Asia. So the headquarters is here in Ho Chi Minh City, but the original hospital actually started in 2014 in Laos. So we still have that location there, uh, one location in Hanoi and um, two hospitals here in Ho Chi Minh City. So here, just want to show before I get started on the presentation, a little glimpse into uh, our hospitals here in uh, Ho Chi Minh City and in bottom right in, in Hanoi. So you guys can see a little bit of the environment here we're, we're working at. So we are a team of 10 international veterinarians, 30 Vietnamese veterinarians. Um, we also work with outreach programs um, with one conservation project called Free the Bears, um, also Animals Asia Elephant Project here in Vietnam, and Manda Lao uh, Elephant Conservation Project in Laos. So let's get started. So today I was speaking about um, health screening from a veterinary perspective. There is quite a lot to pack into that topic. So, and my understanding is that I'm speaking to mostly veterinarians. So a lot of this is what you do from a day-to-day -day basis. You're quite familiar in this area, but I have a lot of things to talk about and discuss that maybe we're not thinking about in our daily work lives. So first of all, let's think about this. Health and wellness are important to all pet owners. You could say that's true or false. But I say they all just don't know it yet. So what does that mean? Well, it's our duty as veterinarians, right, to communicate clearly to our clients, our pet owners, educate them, make them understand that health screening, wellness, preventive medicine should be an important um, an important role um, for us as, as veterinarians and important for um, pet owners as well um, to live long, healthy lives of their pets. Um, a study by Bayer in 2012, they looked at cat owners in uh, the USA, um, nearly 2,000 cats, and what they found from this study was, well, 52% of the cats in this study had not been taken to the veterinarian in the past year for an annual vaccine checkup. And well, 81% thought that their cat was in excellent health, um, which may or may not be the, the case, but um, we're gonna look at some data that seems to imply that this most likely is not the case. So let's, break down what we consider is the modern day pet owner. So nowadays, the pet owners see their pets as more of a family member, right? They're very compassionate. They spend a lot of time in their daily lives with their pets, and they spend a fair amount of money on their animals as well. Maybe not just in a, in a veterinary setting, but um, for for food, um, for well, you name it, for other toys, equipment, um, even technology nowadays that can be used with, with pets and pet apps um, is being spent by the owners. But what more? So pet owners, they kind of demand more services in a smaller amount of time, right? They want things to be very convenient. They would like their service immediately. So nowadays, pet owners aren't only going to, to veterinary clinics for, for advice. Um, they may be going to their pet stores um, or, or other sources as well for, um, for advice, um, along with, with their breeders, for example. 
modern day owners have access to technology. Again, there's all kinds of new gadgets that are coming out for pets, almost like uh, Fitbit for, for pets as well. Um, a lot of socializing online as well with social forums to learn more about particular breeds. Um, and with this technology also comes, of course, and many of you vets understand this, that the pet owners have access to Dr. Google as well for a lot of their resources. So this can be sometimes a little bit difficult in a clinical setting, as, as all of you know, um, but it's something that we also um, have to adjust to and adapt uh, as modern day veterinarians. So just real quick also, we can't forget about those large animal owners. So um, some of you in the audience listening in may actually be large animal vets. Just for today, I will be focusing more for companion animals, cats and dogs. However, just so you know a lot of what I'm talking about, um, could pour over really to any veterinary field. And um, I can just say, you know, being from Sweden, I see that a lot of um, large animal vets, uh, friends of mine that are working in the large animal industry and production animal industry, notice also that even these animal owners are more compassionate now. They understand the importance of good uh, animal health care and how it leads to more successful production as well. Um, seeing more organic products as well. And of course, this is very, very much related to to health care and, uh, and animal care and, and husbandry. So so just to let you know, I'm thinking about you as well, but let's continue. So. When we're talking about healthcare screening, we're talking, of course, about wellness examinations, annual examinations, but this is all kind of falls in the category of preventive veterinary medicine. So again, I know that the majority of you listening are veterinarians, so I won't go with back to kind of school knowledge. I'm sure you guys have been had this drilled in lots and lots of times, but let's just break down some parts of the preventive medicine anyway, just for, for good measure. So what is preventive medicine? Well, it is, of course, the prevention of disease. And as us as veterinarians, I mean, the first thing that really comes to mind that realistically what we really deal with on a day-to-day -day basis when it comes to preventive medicine, first line anyway, is, of course, vaccinations, prophylaxis for for parasitic control. And then, of course, we focus on on clinical examination. But I think it's important for us as veterinarians to go beyond that as well. I mean, obviously, the physical examination that we do in routine screening is looking for early detection of subclinical disease and then also reducing the impact of disease as well. So the idea for us is we want to be proactive rather than reactive, right? So just something for us to keep in mind that I know that in a busy, stressful day, sometimes it's it's difficult to kind of think of that, but that's what we really want to stress with preventive medicine is thinking ahead of the curve. So why should preventive medicine be important in our clinic? Well, obviously it leads to longer and happier lives of our patients. But again, you gotta think on the other side as well, the pet owner's clients, it creates healthy, long relationships with our clients as well, and hopefully keeps them coming back to our clinic, right? So it builds trust, good reputation for not only you as a veterinarian but also for your company and loyalty to your to your clinic another important part is it allows us to acquire baseline data for individuals and establish trends in groups and sets of data and also different ages of um, the animals that we're seeing as well and if you are a clinic owner you have to think about it as well, but it, there does have economical benefits as well to your clinic. Um, increases the, vin the visits to your, your clinic, um, higher numbers of diagnostic workups and treatments, 
So it's, it's kind of a win-win situation there. But let's just think about it for a moment. What may possibly be deterring us as veterinarians from engaging in this proactive wellness examination? Well, first of all, time constraints, right? And let's just take a quick look at this paper it was published this year, actually, where uh, Robinson and uh, the team looked at the consultation length uh, in the first opinion of small animal practice. And what they found was that the average length of consultation, uh, including the health and preventive medicine annual examination, and the average length was just around 10 minutes for that, yeah? But it varied from less than a minute for some consultations and some up to 36 minutes, but average 10 minutes. So what does that tell you then about trying to educate the, the owners about preventive medicine? Well, there's not a whole lot of time to, to pack in much of anything, um, more so than you know, giving that, that vaccination, assigning, and stamping the the vaccine uh, books, and they're on their way, right? But let's also think about an annual exam or a vaccine exam it becomes very routine in a way, right? For for veterinarians, it comes kind of like second nature, and it's easy to miss that individualized assessment, really to personalize the clinical exam with the patients. Communication skills definitely can vary for veterinarians, right? Um, I mean, a lot of veterinarians that go to vet school, they're not doing it necessarily um, for prioritizing, you know, speaking with owners. That's something you learn later on, right? That, that's quite a lot of your job. So there's a lot um, that can vary with that. Sometimes things get blurred. I love working as an international uh, vet, but as I was even speaking earlier um, with, with Gon, is that certain things get lost in translation working in an international clinic, right? So not only do you have to communicate what you really want to get communicated to, to the owner, but um, yeah, it needs to be translated also properly, right? But expectations are important to consider. Sometimes we aren't really clear of what we expect from a healthcare screening, what we really want to get out of it for the owner. And sometimes owners walk away from an exam also not having a clear idea of what should be done with any, if any treatments should be done, when they should be coming back. We're going to be looking at some, some studies about that later as well. Also, the idea that as veterinarians, we don't always want to be selling something, right? People, and that's get a really bad rap for that, right? That they get blamed for trying to, to steal the client's uh, money or things are too expensive, right? So we try as veterinarians as much as possible to, to avoid that stigma, right? That we're just trying to sell things when we're really also want, want to take care and want the best for the animal. So, so what can we see as possible motivators and barriers for our clients' um, desire for wanting to actually have preventive care for their animals? So there was um, a study done um, in 2018 looking at this from um, a client's perspective. And what they learned was what seemed to positively influence the the clients is, is that good relationship with, with the clinic. So they kept on feeling to, to come back to that clinic. Also the education that they received on, um, on various diseases, they felt like when they learned more of what could cause problems for the animals, they were more willing to want to come and make sure that they're that reassurance that their animals actually were healthy. So education, even by posters that could be hanging up in the clinic or leaflets, brochures are going to hand it out. Like I was mentioning before, a lot of owners nowadays are getting advice from breeders. And I mean, this may also have 
have, have good and bad bad things involved with that as well. But that seems to at least be positive um, the influence for coming to a clinic after um, they've received their their um, dog or cat from a breeder. And it seems like for owners seeing other sick animals uh, or previous illness of other animals that they own, that that seems to motivate um, them for coming to the clinic. But what could be negative influence to owners is, well, if they've had a bad experience at a clinic, right? Or even, even medicines that have prescribed um, bad adverse effects or bad outcome of a surgery. Also, with the help of Dr. Google nowadays, of course, um, owners may get advice online and speculate the necessity of certain uh, medications. Um, where they feel like, no, I'll just take the risk of not giving my animal uh, preventive care. Um, and also, of course, costs can be a negative influence for, for the owners. But again, as proactive veterinarians, we should go much further beyond just that quick vaccine jab coming for uh, annual vaccine examination. We should really be seizing the opportunity of getting our clients through the door, be it the first visit ever or then coming for for a revisit. So we should focus on the wellness of the patient rather than, of course, just that vaccine makes a stronger bond with the client and the patient. Again, like I was saying before, we want that education, even if it's just talking about the diet, you know, body score, behavior, um, certain breed, genetic predispositions, paras parasitic diseases, list can go on and on, but that education really gets the client involved in the animal's care. Again, clients see this value of the preventive medicine when they're educated, they understand the potential risk more clearly in comparison to, as mentioned before, that Bayer study where 81% of owners that weren't coming to the clinic, they thought that they're basically their cats were free from risks. So, so I can just show you an example that was done. Um, this was actually um, a study done in Belgium looking at um, a significant number, over 5,000 um, cats and dogs that they were given, the clients were given free consultations. Um, and the aim of the study seemed, of course, to be what findings they were, they were seeing and apparently healthy animals. As we can see, there's quite a lot that were, um, that were found in these animals. Again, these animals came for just that free physical examination alone. Um, and they found just things like body weight, dental calculus, otitis externa, um, I mean, over 33% prevalence um, in apparently healthy cats. So, so this is all good, but it seemed with this, the larger aim of the study was to show that, okay, that's all good and fine. We find these results, but 37% of these pet owners that came for these free health screenings, they did not know and they were not informed that they should come back to their vets um, the following year for another health screening, for example. And as mentioned with 34% um, and 36, 34% of dogs and 36% uh, of cats being overweight and obese, so out of these cases, only 23% only were given any advice about um, the diet and 0% were given any treatment in the form of diet to go home. So again, here, just looking at the, the communication to the owners after physical exam is, is part of the whole picture of preventive medicine as well. So we can look here um, at another study that was done by uh, by Banyard and, and team in 2006. So <clears throat> here, this was also uh, 500 routine vaccine appointments, um, reportedly healthy cats and dogs um, from the owner's perspective. 
and this was only uh, physical examination that was done. So let's break this down. So the designers of this um, paper, they set up three grades of intercurrent disease. Grade one had minor conditions and any variation of normal or requiring further investigation. So this could be things like dental malocclusion, blocked tear ducts, benign skin cysts. Grade two was any medical conditions likely to cause direct detriment to health. So this could be periodontal disease, mitral valve disease um, that were not recognized by the owner. And grade three were medical conditions currently impacting the animal's health that required immediate medical attention, such as diabetes mellitus, um, tick fever, etc. So out of these, 52% of animals were found with intercurrent disease of one of the grades. So just think about that, that's quite significant. If pet owners are saying that their pets are, are healthy, I mean, this, this opens the door to a lot of opportunity for us as veterinarians um, in, in the clinic for uh, preventative care. And 3% of all these had, had severe disease. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about implementing preventive medicine. Again, it's maybe easier said than done for us, and certain veterinarians may have different opinions and ideas uh, about how this should be done. So if you're working in a, in a hospital with other veterinarians as part of your team, then obviously you need to set up a clear policy for wellness examination programs. Um, again, going back to communication, everyone needs to be on board and have an understanding of what really we want out of uh, a wellness examination um, for the clients coming in. And not only that, the client needs to be aware of what to expect as well. So if you're setting up a wellness program, I mean, do you want it just to be a physical examination of the animals coming? Or do you want to offer other diagnostic workup as well, including your analysis, blood work, fecal screening, etc.? So these need to all be decided, first of all, and then all parts of the clinic need a clear understanding of this and communicate it to the client on all steps along the way, starting from reception to the vet nurses, to the vets as well, being on board. So the question is if the clinic has what it takes to do this. So again, um, the motivations that's needed to do this successfully is what the veterinarians really want. You know, if, if they want preventive care to be a part of their clinic, they need to be themselves step one motivated to do it. And with the engagement, they need to actively engage with the client as well to explain to them, educate them the importance, again, of prevent good preventive care. And then having the resources to do all of it. So it may even be um, advertisement campaigns um, to get that information to the owner. Um, but then obviously the clinic needs to have the capability for doing the diagnostic workups and all those tests, if that's what we really want as well as part of our wellness program. So you may want to ta tailor your wellness for the individual animal. And we'll be talking about the life stages of uh, an animal as well. So this should be tailored for that, that life stage as well. But then it's important also for the client to themselves decide really how, how far they would like to take it. So clinics nowadays are, are offering these different wellness uh, packages. So they can actually decide how much of a diagnostic workup um, they would like. But of course, I mean, to have health screening exams, we need to get the actual animals, the pets and their owners into the clinic in the first place. So how are we going to do that? Well, again, with that engagement on the very, very first time we're meeting um, the clients and the pets, we really want to try to, to win them, them over and start with that education from the start, right? We want to, like I mentioned before, educate all the staff members um, on our plan, but also for uh, 
veterinary nurses and everyone actually handling animals, we want to teach them how to be animal friendly handling techniques as inviting for for handling them in, in the clinic. Um, of course, we want to uh, do a friendly nudge of trying to encourage the owners to come with their their animals for regular uh, routine examinations, but we don't want to be too aggressive, of course. Um, like I mentioned again, we can offer these brochures as education. And finally, we can try to set up a calm and non-threatening environment for the animals coming. And one way that we've been do, able to do that here at uh, Animal Doctors International is by setting up a cat-friendly clinic. And we're actually proud last week we were accredited um, with being a part um, of the Inter International Society for Feline Medicine and International Cat Care as an official cat friendly clinic and we're the only um, cat friendly official cat friendly clinic in Vietnam so we're really excited about that but the point of the matter is that we can make it more inviting for our animal owners to rest assured that the experience is not so stressful right we can set up uh, membership programs for the owners to come on a regular basis. You know, one way is to set up a membership where they get free consultations coming to us whenever they'd like, free of charge. And this is one way that we can just continue with these health exams and um, invite the owner to keep on coming back for, for more than required um, annual exams and keeps the owner motivated as well. So we need to make expectations of annual health and wellness exams crystal clear to the owners. So what can actually help us with that? Because again, sometimes things get lost in communication. So we can actually hand out, we can even email to owners ahead of time, uh, free consultation client questionnaires. As we all know as veterinarians, history taking for our medical records can be extremely dif difficult. Again, even more so when you're working in a foreign country, right, where it's not your native language. So sometimes this could be of help to us to have uh, an assessment. So this is from castforlife.org, where they show an example of this assessment for the client to fill out that gives a, a better, more clear understanding um, of, of the medical history, um, how the animals are doing at home, involving, involving diet, um, and behavior. And this is also a good way to set up those expectations for a client. So they know that before they even come into the consultation, that a annual exam may actually recommend other diagnostic work as well, including blood work. So the owner is prepared, so it doesn't come as a shock if we present that to them and ask if that is of interest for them and have more likelihood that they would agree to that kind of diagnostic workup, even though their cat may be perfectly healthy. It's important to understand that many owners, of course, they feel that it's not necessary, right, to do this work, this workup and diagnostics if they feel like their animal is healthy. Also, another way is to standardize the guidelines for consistent and repeated health screening protocols. Again, different vets may have different ideas of what they're doing um, for veterinary screening and may not be, be consistent. And there may be certain things that we're missing out in, in our screening as well. So this is the preventive healthcare guidelines. Um, by the American Animal Hospital Association. So this could even be a good idea to have in your veterinary clinic for you as veterinarian and staff to see as well, um, to guide you along these consultations, again, to standardize those, but also for your pet owners to see as well and know what to expect uh, in these, uh, these examinations. And these these guidelines, uh, both for, for cat and, and dog, um, again, from the uh, American Animal Hospital Association.
So these, of course, are the life stages that we should be thinking about. I mean, that we are seeing in our in our daily veterinary lives. We're all aware of these. So, of course. We know we're seeing more frequent visits um, at the younger stages and the older stages, but we should be considering also what we may be including in our wellness exam, um, depending on these ages. So obviously for our, our senior patients, you know, we can be focusing a lot more attention to certain orthopedic problems, um, certain renal problems as, as well. So just important for us to think about and make sure that we're taking the history, we're actually considering that life stage as well. So, diagnostics and blood work is part of these wellness examinations. So again, now we're talking about trying to ask your client to do diagnostic workup on supposedly healthy animals. And what's the number one question you most often get from your clients? Well, do you really think it's necessary? I don't know how many times I've heard that question um, just this past year, but at the end of the day, looking at the data, it seems like, yes, we do feel like it is, is necessary and it could be a good idea and maybe we're just not doing it enough and should really be pushing our clients to, to think about doing um, this kind of diagnostic workup annually um, as, as part of their uh, wellness exam. So looking at this paper here uh, from the Australian Veterinary Journal, so looking at the prevalence of clinical pathological changes in healthy middle-aged dogs and cats presenting to the veter veterinary practice. So again, what's important stressing here is what the owner sees as apparently healthy uh, animals. So <clears throat> The researchers here looked at biochemical and hematological profiles. They looked at your analysis and thyroxine levels were also measured in 406 uh, clinically healthy middle aged dogs. So from five to eight years old and 130 uh, cats aged six to nine years old. So what did they find? Well, quite shockingly, only 55 dogs of all the 406 in the study had no abnormalities found in these diagnostics, and only 26 cats of the 130 had no abnormalities. Another study um, was looking at the routine health screening. Um, apparently, healthy middle age and old cats. <clears throat> so here they were looking also at um, systolic blood pressure. Um, as long with um, the biochemistry uh, urinalysis as well, uh, phenoscopy and uh, Schirmer tear tests were done as well. So in this study, the clinical significance that was found, so of course, I mean, we would probably think that this is the case with older, older patients, but just so we can actually see here what they found. So the older cats over 10 years of age had signif significantly higher systolic blood pressure, heart rates, murmur frequency, thrombocyte count, urine protein creatinine ratio, serum uh, urea and bilirubin concentrations, and significantly lower body condition score, hematocrit, albumin, totem calcium concentrations than the middle-aged cats from six to 10 years of age. So the common occurrence of physical examination laboratory abnormalities in apparently healthy old cats underlines the need for these regular health checks and the development of age-dependent laboratory reference intervals. So just for us to think about here, if nothing else, with our senior and super senior, uh, or also our geriatric, I mean, another word for it, of course, but uh, that we should really be considering, it, if nothing else, for these uh, um, this age groups to really consider um, doing these diagnostic workups um, as part of the wellness exam. So I just want to go through some case studies that we've seen here now in these um, recent months. So case number one here, we had a nine-year-old female American long hair cat. Um, so it was here for wellness exam prior to traveling, so the owner was moving from, from Vietnam. 
no concerns reported. Um, the cat was eating well. Um, again, apparently healthy according to the owner. Um, the complete blood counts and biochemistry we ran were within normal limits. But doing the physical examination, we as the vets obviously could see that uh, that the dental examination was not normal. So of course we could see this um, swelling of the gingiva over the upper right canine. So we did further uh, investigation of that and uh, found that this was a case of alveolar osteitis and uh, did the extraction of this canine and were able to remove this exuberant bone that was formed from this disease. And um, that the cat did very well after that. So a second case here, this was a one-year-old male domestic short hair. It was also here for wellness exam, apparently healthy. Um, reported by the owner on the physical examination, we noticed quite significantly pale mucous membranes. Um, so we ran the, the bloods on the biochemistry, we found hypoalbuminemia, hyperglobulinemia, uh, elevated AST levels, hyperbilirubinemia, and hy hypoglycemia. Uh, we ran the CBC and found uh, anemia and thrombocytopenia. So we continued with diagnostics and uh, did ultrasound, found a uh, mild amount of, of free fluid in the abdomen and uh, a granulomatous mass next to the spleen. And it turned out that this was um, a case of, of feline infectious peritonitis that, uh, that we were able to see on this health screening. So our third case here, we have um, a 10 year old male Maltese. Uh, for an annual checkup. The owner reported that the dog was apparently healthy, but they noticed a lot of weight gain quite suddenly. Um, ran the biochemistry and found uh, mild hypoglobulinemia and elevated ALT. And the complete blood count, we found mild anemia. Um, we did an X-ray of this dog and found large abdominal mass. And um, after finding this, um, a colleague of mine went straight in for surgery that same day and uh, successfully removed this, uh, this mass. And it was a, a massive mass, a very large mass. So uh, the, uh, the surgery went very, very well and uh, the dog is, is thriving, doing, doing very well today. And um, we sent off the uh, the mass for histopathology and uh, found that this seemed to be a spindle cell tumor. And the last case here, so this is a 10 year old domestic short hair here for routine wellness exam. Again, apparently healthy according to the owner. But for our physical examination, uh, we found the body condition assessment, the body condition score and weight were um, significantly lower than previous records from the previous annual exam. Um, so we ran the, the complete blood count biochem. Um, found that the there was hyponatremia and hypochloremia. Uh, the CPC was actually within normal normal range. Um, but with the significant weight loss, we decided to run the thyroxine test as well. So we were in the, the TT4 and found that this was significantly high. Um, and of course, we were able to get a diagnosis of, of hyperthyroidism. So let's just recap here what we've been talking about. So number one, from a preventative medicine standpoint, doing our annual exams, health screening, we need to be thinking more proactively, not reactively. We need to give the time to our patients for individualized and personalized assessment. Not only will this give a strong relationship, um, but it will motivate the owners um, to come back when they see that service being done as well. We can see already here from what I've shown from some papers that the opportunities are vast um, for engaging in deeper uh, preventative care measures. So you shouldn't just be thinking again about these vaccines and the prophylactic parasitic meds. We need to go deeper um, in what we can offer our, our patients. Communication is key for these strong client-vet relationships. 
we need to use standardized guidelines for keeping these health screenings consistent in your clinic for all veterinarians and staff. And we need to make preventive diagnostic investigations and more routine practice as well in our wellness exams and to prepare your clients mentally for these um, to get them involved in the process. So with that, good veterinarians talk to animals, great veterinarians hear them talk back. So I hope with what we talked about today, we can really kind of just sit back and take a moment to reflect and see how we can use everything here in preventative uh, veterinary medicine with physical examinations and our diagnostic workups to be able to listen as clearly as we can to the animals that we meet in our consultation room. So with that, I want to say a big thank you uh, once again um, to all of you for listening in and for Simati and Gang here for organizing this. It's been a pleasure to be here with you guys today. Thank you.